The Australian government has urged Thailand to exercise its legal discretion to free a refugee soccer player, football player, excuse me, who's being held in Bangkok. Now, Hakim Al Araibi has pleaded for Thailand not to send him back to his native Bahrain because he says he'll be tortured. The Gulf nation is seeking his extradition to serve a 10 year prison sentence for a crime that he denies. Well, Craig Foster joins me now from Bangkok. He's a former Australian football captain and he is spearheading the campaign to get Hakim released. Craig was outside that court yesterday. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's go back to the beginning. 2014, Hakim flees Bahrain. He is given refugee status in Australia, permanent residency. In that time, in those four years, has the Bahraini government asked for the Australian government to extradite him? No. So what the uh, Australian ambassador designate to Thailand yesterday made clear to the public here, which is really important, he said, in that four years, we haven't heard from them. They've done nothing. So if there was a problem with this young man, uh, if indeed uh, this was about law, if indeed this was anything to do with extradition, uh, clearly they would have been in touch well before. They weren't. Uh, they colluded with Thailand. Um, we think they may have been monitoring him in uh, because he is a critic of both the government and royal family. As people will know, he spoke out against Sheikh Salman's presidency for FIFA only in 2016. So it appears as though they waited. When he went for his, uh, for his visa at the Thai embassy in Melbourne, only four days later, on the 8th of November, he went to pick it up. And on that day, the Interpol red notice was placed at the behest of Bahrain. So okay. they knew he was coming. This has been prepared for, for a long time. And it was important comments from our government yesterday to let the people of Thailand know that this is a complete sham. Uh, this is about retribution uh, and about uh, trying to refoul a refugee and a critic of their regime. Now, obviously, Sheikh Salman is not here to answer those allegations. Um, I just want to um, clarify one thing, that Interpol red notice. So he goes to Thailand in November for his honeymoon. He gets there and he is arrested because of this Interpol red notice. It's this uh, an international um, arrest warrant. But it was the Australians who tipped off the ties that he was on his way there, wasn't it? Yeah, look, um, the, the facts of those are, are, are quite unclear. So... I understand that's the case, and I think um, there, there certainly needs to be an investigation in Australia. Um, we're, I'm just not sure whether the uh, Interpol red notice was already placed on them, and then the Australian government and AFP says that it's kind of an automatic process that they then let Thailand know that he's coming. Irrespective, that should never have happened because he's a refugee and he was under a protection visa by the Australians. So someone um, uh, has either not thought it through too well or has done an automatic process when they shouldn't have. There's been there's people calling now for a safe list so that when people become a refugee, they are placed on a list, in which case the red notice can't be put on them. So we need an investigation. We need to know exactly what occurred. Nevertheless, the practical reality of that was that Thailand and Bahrain were already working together anyway. And uh, the, the politically, though, it was really important because it allowed the Thai government to say, well, Australia notified us, which, uh, which uh, you know, factually is accurate. Nevertheless, the, the, it was clear that there was collusion going on. And that allowed Thailand, at least for the first month, to say, well, this is Australia's fault. It's true in part, but it took us quite a while to then discover that in actual fact, the fix was already on well before that. Now, the Bahrainis um, would likely turn around and say to you, look, this is a man we found guilty in a court of law, sentenced him to 10 years in prison. Extradition is a fairly normal practice. He's just a fugitive. Well, he's a, a refugee. He's, he's been granted protection by Australia, so it's not normal practice to extradite a refugee. In actual fact, it's illegal under international law. Uh, also, within the football community or the IOC, this is a member of the international sporting community, Bahrain, uh, there are obligations that come with that. And one of those is abiding by international law. So that argument would be completely uh, erroneous. In actual fact, he should just be released immediately and sent back home. And we think that sporting sanctions are an absolute critical factor here. And it's necessary for both FIFA and the ISC to step up now and say to both of these countries that this simply can't occur. Under international law, he must be allowed to return back to Australia. Now, the crime that he was found guilty of in Bahrain, he denies, doesn't he? He certainly does, and for very good reason, because it's a farce. Uh, uh, the uh, Interpol red notice that was placed on him uh, on uh, 8th of November and under which he was detained here in Bangkok actually says that 
a group of people uh, got together to discuss some type of uh, vandalism of a police station later that evening, and they got together at 6 p.m. to discuss how they were going to do it. Well, at 6 p.m., this man was playing in a televised football game. That, that vision has been played on Australian television. That match sheet, that official match sheet, was given by FIFA to Hakeem's lawyer, Natalie, here only just last week, shortly before, only a couple of days ago, shortly before yesterday's hearing. Uh, so, you know, this is, uh, this is an absolute farce of a case uh, and uh, the world is starting to know that. And that's what's really important about this campaign is Thailand and Bahrain thought that, you know, this player, no one cared about him. He plays in the second division of Australia. We didn't know him. And uh, I think they, they believed that he would come here our advice is that within a, a couple of days or a week maximum, he would have been refouled back to uh, back to Bahrain. No one would have heard from him again. Now international awareness is uh, has been increased to the stage where yesterday, I think we had 700,000 tweets or something. Uh, no longer can this case stand up in the public domain. And that's the problem for Bahrain. That they're now going to have to argue publicly and justify uh, some of these uh, ridiculous uh, uh, assertions they're making around this uh, case that ultimately was in absentia. Um, Craig, how did you find out about, about Hakim and what happened to him? Well, I was contacted by his club, I think, on the day that he was detained here, or perhaps the following day, um, back in Australia, um, simply because, um, you know, as an ex-player, I work, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for refugees with Amnesty International Australia, uh, and work a little bit in this field. So, uh, they told me about the case. Uh, I wasn't aware of Hakim, um, but as soon as I saw the iniquity of it uh, and clearly the injustice, and also I was very concerned about the football politics and I, and I remain so. You know, all of us in football, including your viewers, know what's occurred with FIFA in recent years and they're trying to change and I'm delighted that they sent someone to the court yesterday and are starting to really step up here. I'm very pleased about that. But AFC, we mentioned Salman before. Uh, you know, there's this kid is caught within some very deep uh, and sordid uh, football political webs, and that's an injustice that none of us could stand by and watch. Does he have any contact with the outside world? He has had a number of visitors, including some journalists, and uh, just in the last few days, Thailand have cracked down, and now there's a very short list, I think, of five. Uh, who can go see him, only very close friends or family members. So we're not pleased by that. Uh, I think there's someone from the Australian Embassy can go. Uh, so he's had limited visitors. He hasn't seen his wife for well over two months. She left here shortly about a week or so after detention because she felt unsafe, given the, you know, what the regime in Bahrain is well known for, certainly by uh, Bahrainis around the world. So Have she went back to Australia, hasn't been back. So he hasn't seen his wife. He's in, at a very low ebb uh, and is extremely distressed, and rightly so. And have you spoken to Hakim? I saw him last week, uh, I think it was. Um, I came here for a week before we raced over to FIFA to talk to Fatma Samura and ask them or urge them to step up and escalate their actions. I saw him in jail and it was very emotional, actually. Um, afterwards, I was struggling to talk about it. Um, was choking up because just seeing a, a fellow player, but a young man who's a very soft type of character um, uh, in jail, in a, you know, in a Bangkok jail, unjustly. Uh, he's a torture survivor. He was tortured by the regime back in, I think, 2012. That's why we gave him asylum in Australia. And to see him facing that again, uh, well, it's just horrible. And any person of good conscience around the world, and there are now millions, are stepping forward and saying, we're just not going to stand for it. Now, you were outside that court yesterday. Um, where, where does it leave him now? He's been told that he has to stay two more months in jail. Exactly, and we don't want to know about that. That's a matter for the lawyer. So she's pleased, uh, Natalie, that she has 60 days to prepare a case. That's wonderful. But for us, every day is a, is a new sentence for this young man. Uh, so we want him out today, and we continue to call for that. Uh, if uh, you know, every day is, is psychological torture. And that's one of the things here that we think Bahrain wanted to achieve was not necessarily extradition, but was try to get him through the court process here, which can take anywhere from one to four years. So we are, we are calling on the Thai Prime Minister. We, we had confirmed yesterday, whilst the Thai government denied it, that in actual fact, he has executive discretion. He can make this go away at any time. That's why we think uh, sporting sanctions are important that the Australian government escalates it also for the reasons you said before. Our government is implicated in what's occurred here, 
We need to get the bottom of that. So we need a, a severe escalation in all of the advocacy from every stakeholder, including sport right now. And we need to get this Thai Prime Minister prior Chan Ocha to uh, apply his discretion and, and let the poor young kid go home. OK. Craig Foster, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. You're watching Sky News. Coming up.